Something's missing. There's not enough bass out of this can, but I can't figure it out. Well, this probably isn't going to be of much use to most people, but this is a quick thing about SP-15A Electro Voice. Um, the SP-15A was well, a woofer made by Electro Voice for high fidelity audio file type usage. Basically, it's the same woofer as the um, famous SRO they used to make but with a little bit lighter cone for better fidelity. And you see I got two different ones here. Um, one is the much older series, dating from the late 70s. And the other one's probably dating from the 80s. Which is the frame they still use for their EVM series speakers they still make. Um, Anyway, I've got a long checkered history with these two. The uh, big old ones served many years properly in a big cabinet that I eventually sold to a friend. Um, the six foot tall cabinet. A labyrinth or transmission line type cabinet. And these really kicked out nicely. They really worked nice. Eventually though, maybe egged down by the fact that he was a smoker. The uh, surrounds, or maybe just age, the surrounds uh, eventually broke down and started sounding bad. Anyway, so I got these two speakers back when he, uh, we ordered some new speakers for those cabinets. And I got these two back with the rotten uh, suspension. And I was going to get a suspension kit to replace the suspension. And, um,. I received such and I don't know, probably about 26 bucks at the time or more. I'm not sure what they were. Actually, I got the receipt in here somewhere. Anyway, I didn't really like them, so I never put them on. There's a couple things I don't like about them there. They're porous, which means they got to get sealed. And they really don't seem like they have enough uh, freedom of movement for the long excursion these woofers are capable of. So I never put them on. Well, it's this long, convoluted, long, convoluted story. The uh, these woofers actually got stolen from me. My house got broken in, and this was some of the stuff that got stolen. And the kid who stole them started putting the kit on. Did half the job. Used all the glue up on one speaker. This nasty uh, glue I'm going to grind off, I guess, to get the mask back down. But he never finished the job, didn't um, do the surround down, which is what I'm going to try to do today. I'm kind of stuck using him now that he started the project. And the reason I'm doing this at this juncture is because uh, this woofer was just distorting like crazy. That's why I pulled it out of that cabinet with a gaping hole in it. Um, this speaker was always defective, even from brand new, but I was used, used to be able to like crank the stereo up and it got rid of the distortion. It's like some kind of aluminum to copper junction or something that didn't go too good. And I'd blow it out and it would sound fine. Well, somewhere along the line it got more and more stubborn and uh, I eventually blew out the voice coil or cracked the voice coil in half or something. It still works, but it distorts nasty. And I really I can't crank it up loud enough to make it go away anymore. I mean, it doesn't fix the problem to crank it up momentarily and turn it down. When you turn it down, it's still distorted. And if you even move the, the cone manually, you can kind of hear a clicking and grinding type noise. Flapping or something going on. Can you hear that? Yeah, well that makes your music sound like squat. Tapping in there. It's, it seems to be rubbing too, but it's not the only thing going on. There's actually some kind of with the momentum of a tap. You hear that? So I think the coil itself actually broke in half. So I'm looking for a good reconer for these. Someone who will do a good job reconing an EV. I'll probably have to turn them in SROs to get them reconed though. I doubt anybody's got this cone. Lower wattage cones than the SROs, a little less mass for a little better fidelity. 
just basically the same uh, base capacity or maybe even a little lower base capacity. So I'm going to do a real hack job and glue the uh, surround on that I got and then eventually come back with a grinder and grind some of that excess glue off that he left. Maybe clean it up a little and throw it in that cabinet just so I got something to fill the hole. I may buy another pair of match woofers from some other brand probably. I've been looking around the internet. There's only s some woofers that'll work properly in a transmission line type enclosure. Basically the same kind of woofer you'd use for a base reflex. But there's other parameters too. So here I'm using a function generator program at a low frequency. I think I picked 26 hertz roughly. Just to get the cone moving. Test amp. Coming moving so I can hear if it's knocking or scraping or anything. I try to adjust it while my glue is drying. So excuse me while I try to finish that project where the glue does dry. I'm just trying to manipulate things so I don't hear any why, uh, scraping or anything. It's a little bit of thumping now, but that's because it's not glued down right. And now I've got it sitting. Still got the cone moving. I don't know if you can see that. Um, put this foam, uh, rather the cardboard uh, gasket back on over it, letting the glue all sit together. I wanted to use a glue that wouldn't set right away so I could play with it. I bought some stuff and ended up not using them and thought, well, I'll use Seal All because Seal All, um, I know it takes a while to dry. And a brand new tube of Seal All and uh, things semi gelatinous. <laughs> Kind of uh, disappointed there. I ended up using it anyway because I started using it. We'll see how it goes. I guess this isn't the uh, this is a recovery effort anyway. This is probably gonna be a temporary speaker. We'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll do the other one just like it and uh, have a pair again. Anyway, if anybody knows anything about uh, getting EVs reconed by someone who's competent um, and can handle SP15As of either uh, generation. Um, I'd like to know about it. I've seen some really bad recon jobs where the speakers just didn't sound the same. You know, they worked fine, but they just didn't sound the same with the new cones in them. So I'm a little bit skeptical of uh, some of these guys. Well, then I'm going to sit and wait a little bit and try it out in a few after it sets. Actually, i got to go over it again with this other stuff and uh, seal up that porous surround. Because the surround isn't sealed, it's breathable. That's not going to work. That's <laughs> oh, well. Like I said, I wasn't going to use these kits, and then uh, someone made that choice for me. broken. That won't stop me from trying to fix it. So the next step I put this flexible sealant or flexible glue but I'm using it as a sealant over this porous uh, stuff and put it all out and worked it in real well. And I'm going to let that dry. Of course I'm doing this all outside so I wouldn't get all these vapors in the house. And of course, as usual, I'm using Botany Bay for a music source. And again, I'm putting the weights back on. On a great Botany Bay tune. Um, the newer 
vintage seems to be more efficient, especially in the mid bass. I'm running the uh, Yamaha Class AB1 because the bias just isn't stable enough to maintain AB2. I'm still going to be working on this amp a little bit more. But I've got the amp set flat and I got it set to mono. So I can compare these speakers a little bit. I tried to set the crossovers the same. And here it is installed. The screws stick out a little bit. The uh, gasket apparently is a little thinner. They always stick out a little bit. I'm hearing a little distortion from this uh, Yamaha. Got low volumes. Well, the speaker, I'm not sure which. Kind of similar to what I've always had. And then here's the other woofer. This is the uh, newer vintage EV. Rear vented. The actual intention of this cabinet wasn't really for hi fi, although I meant. I did make them as a shorter version of a longer cabinet I made. Those sound really good. I hope to get those cabinets back. That's another story. I sold them to a friend. I may, I may get them back because he owes me money. Those cabinets are uh, 70 inches tall, almost 6 foot. Or these are a shorter version. I made these. I sold the big cabinets because uh, I was going to college. And I had to, you know, liquidate some of my stuff. I made these cabinets later, um, after I dropped out of college, or at least taken a pause. And the idea of this cabinet was mostly for sound reinforcement rather than hi-fi, although to work in a corner it should still work pretty well, which they do. They don't quite get the super low bass that the uh, 70s version did. The loop length is a little bit shorter. I'll explain that loop length some other time in a different video on transmission line speakers. But actually, I was going to make the loop length longer because these were um, actually intended to be stacked. You know, if you could picture an array of six or eight of these laying on their sides with the uh, you know chevron formation with that top panel there, you know, being butted up against the other cabinet top panel laying on their sides in a chevron and stack them six or eight high. Um, that's kind of how I was intending these to be if they were going to be used for sound reinforcement. And that would have lengthened the loop length being stacked in that way. Uh, of course I never built that many. That job sort of... Those two partners that I worked for went in different ways and uh, I thought the audio guy I didn't know he was going to stay in business. I went with the other guy who uh, ended up going to, at that time, satellite business. One of the big old C-band satellite dishes that we were putting in for a while. So I never did make a stack of these. <laughs> Probably never will. We'll see. This cabinet does work pretty well, even for hi-fi. I use piezo tweeters. The uh, choice of the piezo 2x6 tweeter horns was mainly based on this thing for a sound reinforcement application. They're good tweeters. They are extremely durable. I'm probably going to put a switch on the crossover so I can turn one tweeter off and you know, run one tweeter at a time if I want. This is probably what I'll do for a more hi-fi. Um, the 2x6s are very durable. They're uh, very fast tweeters, very excellent transient response, excellent, very super high end is very good on them. The downside is their frequency response isn't very flat. It's got a lot of little ripples. So it gives them a kind of a characteristic sound, which is, isn't always totally desirable for hi-fi. If I was building a hi-fi speaker, I might choose something different. They do work pretty well here. They do sound pretty well. The uh, 70th version of this cabinet, the tall version with the flat top, I actually intended to put electrostatic tweeters in. That project never got finished either. And that one's running piezos as well. Kind of by default. But that's how this project sits at this point. You need to uh, install that. You need to do some finishing up on the cabinet and. Uh, install that crossover properly and uh, decide whether I'm going to put a grill or not on these.
or maybe a partial grill rather than a full length grill. Love the bass in this tune. It really thumps you in the chest. Well, I did uh, several minutes of uh, listening tests that I did put on video, but really you can't hear any difference in the camera. The camera certainly isn't very accurate. This is the um, older woofer, of course. All right, and here's the uh, newer vintage one, which again is discontinued at this point, SP15A. But it uses the more modern frame that the newer ones use, and it's rear. The uh, magnet structure is rear vented instead of front vented, like the older one. Um, in listening test, which I did several minutes of, this one has a little bit more efficiency in the mid bass, which isn't really totally desirable. The other one has more of a flatter bass profile. Um, they both do about the same in the low bass. So actually, the the uh, little mid bass peak is not all that welcome. Of course I don't have a analyzer to really uh, know for sure which one's more accurate.